Ahoy mates, Julie here, and welcome to Monday's episode of The Voters TV. First up today, here's what's making a splash in nautical news. Star Clippers revealed plans earlier this month to build the largest, most expensive sailing vessel ever constructed. The new gargantuan ship, set to debut in 2010, will be 518 feet long, or 157 meters. That's the equivalent of two football fields. And the ship will be 61 feet at the beam with a 20-foot draft. That will make her 48% larger than the line's Royal Clipper, which currently holds the title of largest sailing ship in the world. But even with that dramatic increase in size, the new build will carry only 30% more passengers, with a double occupancy capacity of 296 guests and 140 crew. And to move the whole group along, it will take 37 sails, totaling 68,350 square feet of sail surface area, spread out over five masts. Shipboard facilities will include a two-level dining room, capable of accommodating all 296 passengers in one seating, and a retractable marina on the stern will provide access for water sports, snorkeling, and diving. The ship will be so big, in fact, that it will feature three swimming pools. And as with past Clipper ships, one of the pools will have a glass bottom, allowing light to filter down from the sun deck into the piano lounge and dining room. Again, it won't be ready until 2010, but in the meantime, if you're interested in exploring vacation options aboard one of Star Clippers' existing ships, visit www.starclippers.com. Next up in our Power Play segment, it's more solar-powered boat building. Only this time, the hook of the story isn't so much the boat, but the builder. A couple weeks ago, we brought to you a story on solar-powered boats. I covered some of the more well-known projects, such as the Loon and the Sun 21, both very noteworthy in terms of making an effort for more environmentally friendly powerboats. But I recently came across one that, to me, offers an entirely different type of inspiration. Meet 17-year-old B.J. Walling, who, as part of a high school project, is, as he puts it, engineering a better solar electric boat. BJ is enrolled in the Authentic Scientific Research Program, or ASR, which is considered to be one of the top five high school research programs in the world. This is a three-year course modeled after the research activities of a master's level thesis and can even earn participants college credit. BJ has spent the last two years researching his project, and finally, this summer, he got his build on. Not only that, but he documented his progress with a collection of videos which he shares with the world on YouTube. As you can see here, it's well done, and I think amusing. BJ also maintains a website at www.freewebs.com forward slash RJ Walling, where he tells us, the boat that I am building will not use gasoline. Instead, it will obtain its energy from the sun and possibly the wind. He says that most boats create large wakes, which erode beaches. This boat is flat-bottomed and only draws three inches of water, so it will produce a much smaller wake and thus cause far less erosion. BJ goes on to tell us that his boat will be powered by an electric jet drive system, and therefore there will be no exposed propeller. He says in a statement that this is important because an exposed propeller can harm people, aquatic vegetation, and animals, such as manatees. Finally, he adds, these are just some of the environmentally friendly features of the boat. Amazing. What was even more impressive to me was when I emailed him about a month ago to find out more about his project. And after two weeks went by, he replied with a very kind message, explaining he was sorry he hadn't gotten back to me sooner, but he'd been away at band camp. Do you love it? Building a boat, a solar-powered boat no less, attending band camp, making web videos, and maintaining a website. All while this 17-year-old is still in high school. I know I was inspired. BJ will continue to build his boat during this school year and will be sure to follow his progress. By the way, his project is supported by donations of supplies from various marine businesses. If you're a marine business looking for a feel-good project to support, perhaps consider contacting BJ with a donation. And finally today, speaking of achievements of excellence, 
I've got a little related nautical nomenclature in our Did You Know segment. Did you know that first rate, a term used to imply excellence, actually stems from the naval tradition? That's right. From round about the 16th century on until steam-powered ships took over, British naval ships were rated as to the number of heavy cannons they carried. This system was set up in 1677 by Samuel Pepys, the secretary to the Admiralty. The rating of a ship was used for administrative and military use because the number and weight of guns determined the size of crew and hence the amount of pay and rations needed. And a ship of 100 or more guns was designated a first-rate ship. Second rates carried 90 to 98 guns. Third rates, 64 to 89 guns. Fourth rates, 50 to 60 guns, and then on down the line to where 48 to 20 guns were fifth and sixth rated. This rating system also indicated whether a ship was powerful enough to stand in the line of battle, and a first to third rate ship was regarded as a ship of the line. And that's a wrap on what we hope has been a first rate line of battle episode of The Boaters TV. Join us back here on Wednesday, and until then, safe and happy boating to you all. Take care. This episode of The Boaters TV has been brought to you by the word leeway. The sideways drift of a ship to leeward of a desired course.